Lord God, we come to you this morning longing for ears that will be opened to your word. Speak to us this morning. Teach us your word, your words of eternal life. To the glory of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Before I begin this morning, I want to make a brief note. Um, there are often times in our year as a church, we walk through this thing called the lectionary, and the lectionary walks us through these different scripture readings. And there are a lot of times when the scripture readings are very applicable to the moment that we are in. Sometimes they talk about spiritual truths that just hit us. Sometimes they convict us. Sometimes they are ironic, and that is what I am dealing with this morning, because in today's scripture we hear about proclamation and about someone whose voice is healed, and I have a little bit of an issue with my throat this morning. God has a sense of humor, but I encourage you to pray for me, and we will press on. And although this is a silly example... There, that is kind of the way that Scripture works, isn't it? it our story intersects the, the story of Scripture. God's story meets our story. In the Bible, we see the story of Israel fulfilled in the story of Jesus. They all come together in some odd way. And even the simplest stories can have deep meaning for us. Now, in today's gospel reading from Mark, we hear one of those stories. And it's a short simple story about a man who is healed. We meet Jesus on the road, coming back from the region of Tyre, and he's, he's going through this region called the Decapolis. And as he's walking along the road, a group of people bring an unnamed man to him, and this is a man who is in need of healing. He cannot, he cannot speak clearly, and he cannot hear. We don't get much of a backstory on this man, but Jesus sees this man, and seeing him and his frailty and weakness, he takes him aside and heals him. Jesus sticks his fingers in the man's ears, and the man can hear. Jesus touches the man's tongue, and the man can speak clearly now. And the whole crowd is amazed at this. But then Jesus tells them to say nothing. And that seems ironic. Why? How could they not say something about this? And so they do. They can't seem to obey Jesus. They keep talking. They keep sharing. And the more and more that Jesus tells them to not talk, the more and more they proclaim who God is and what God has done. He has made the deaf hear. He has made the mute speak. And that news can't be held back. And that's the story. A nameless man is healed, and people talk about it. So what are we to make of this story? At first glance, there doesn't seem to be much here. Sure, Jesus heals a man in a significant way, but there are other stories in the gospel that seem much bigger, much more significant when it comes to, when it comes to healing. They spark the imagination more. There's that story about the men who come and cut a hole in a roof and lower a paralytic man down for Jesus to heal. We hear a story about a woman who touches the hem of Jesus' cloak and is healed from an issue of blood. We hear a story about Lazarus being raised from the dead. While there are no ordinary stories about healing in Scripture, this story doesn't seem so profound in comparison with the others. Here we have a man whose ears and mouth are healed by Jesus. There are no dramatic resurrections it's just a story about healing. But if we peel back the layers and we look underneath this story, we find that there is something profound here. And it isn't just that Jesus has the power to heal, but that in the person of Jesus, a grand sweeping narrative is fulfilled. That in him, God has finally come to save his people. He has come to open their ears and to loosen their tongues. And as we encounter that story this morning, that becomes our story as well. But this story begins long before Jesus' birth. 
We hear that story in the Old Testament lesson this morning from Isaiah. The words of Isaiah ring with hope for a desperate people, the desperate people of Israel. We hear God tell his people to be strong and to not be afraid because their God will eventually come and deliver them. He will come and rescue them. He will come and save them. And what is the evidence that this is happening? Isaiah tells that the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped, the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. Beautiful images, a beautiful glimpse of a coming kingdom. These will be the signs of God's salvation. These will be the signs of his justice. And for the people of Israel, these were signs of hope. Israel longed for God to do these things. They longed for him to come with vengeance and save them. They longed for this salvation as they walked a road into exile in Babylon, as they suffered under foreign rulers who persecuted them for their beliefs, and as they sat there under Roman rule in the first century. They needed hope. They longed for God to save them. They longed for the lame to walk, for the mute to speak, for the deaf to hear, because when that happened, they knew that God was with them. This was the world that Jesus was born into, a world longing for God to come with vengeance and save his people, for justice to be done. They were looking for God to save his people. They were looking for some kind of hope. And it's into that world that the gospel lesson occurs this morning. The people around Jesus are longing for someone to come and do the mighty acts that were described in Isaiah. And so when Jesus pulls that deaf man aside from the crowd and gives him hearing and speech, it is a sign. It is a sign to everyone around that God has finally come. God has come to save his people. In other gospel accounts, we hear that the lame are walking, that the blind are seeing. The moment is now. God has finally come to his people. And can't you imagine the joy that was on their faces? Can't you imagine what it would be like to finally see your Savior, your Lord, your God has finally come to deliver you? You could now be unafraid. You could now be strong. God was here. He was coming to rescue his people. And this healing pointed to the fact that the kingdom of God was near. So God had come to save his people. This was a sign that God had come to save his people. But there's something more to this story of healing than just a prophecy being fulfilled about God's salvation. Because this story also speaks to the way that people needed to receive the kingdom of God. Like the deaf man that Jesus healed, people need their ears to be opened so that they can hear the truth about God's kingdom. The message of the kingdom of God was good news, and it was news. It was news that was heard, and it needed to be heard with open and receptive ears. And deaf ears can only be opened by the work of God. The news of the kingdom of God had come, but people needed to hear. But beyond just hearing, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God also demanded a response. Those who heard about the kingdom of God could not help but share it. We see this in the gospel. These are those who had seen God's work of healing couldn't stop talking about it. Jesus told them to stop, but they couldn't hold it in. And so tongues were loosened. And the message of the kingdom of God spread, a message of healing and wholeness, a message of repentance and belief, the message of Jesus, the message of the person of Jesus. That message was spoken by tongues that had been healed by the work of God. Like the deaf man, Jesus was opening ears to hear the good news and loosening tongues to proclaim that news to the world. And while we can look back on that time and think how different it is from right now, 
Jesus is still doing that work today. He is still opening ears. He is still loosening tongues. It is true that we live in a world that is very different. We live in a world that's different than the first century. But the longings of the human heart are still the same. We're still human beings longing for something. We long to have hope. We long for security. We long for peace. We certainly long for love. We long for justice in this world. We live in a world where people long for good news. They long for some word that will lift them. But because of sin in our world, because of brokenness that exists around us, people are deaf to the good news. People can't hear. Sometimes the news doesn't seem good. But through incredible acts of God throughout the world, acts that we see, some acts that we don't see, Jesus is still opening ears to hear about the kingdom, to hear about that good news. He gives hope to hopeless people, peace to people who are restless, and love to those who are cast out by the world. Deaf ears are still being opened to hear the message of salvation and the good news of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and ascension. Many of us here know that moment of hearing. We know that time when God came to us and encountered us in a real way, and we heard those words of eternal life, and they were life to us. Some of us can't remember those times, but we still walk a journey that is marked by good news that has been passed down to us. And God is still spreading that news. God is doing that. He is bringing about new creation all around us, and he is bringing about new creation within us. And new lives are being transformed by God's grace, and these lives are beautiful signs of God's healing throughout this world. But for us today in this room, I don't want us to miss where we are in this story. Because we can read this story and not see ourselves. But I think, I think that this healing of a deaf man asks us two questions. And we have to see ourselves as that deaf man. First, we have to ask whether our ears are open. Are we able to hear God's word for ourselves? Are we open to hearing the word of God and allowing it to transform our lives? And this is a very difficult question. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to do it. That's what we hear in the letter from James this morning. James tells us how difficult he is. He says that it is one thing to hear the word, but it is another thing to live out that word. It's easy to hear it. But the change that it prompts in our life is hard and difficult. But if we're truly open to that word, if our ears have been opened to the voice of God in our lives, a voice that we know we can trust, a voice, the voice of a father, the voice of someone who loves us, if we know we can trust that voice, that voice, that word can transform us. If we truly allow God to rule and reign in our lives, if we truly allow the kingdom of God to become present in who we are, we can be doers of the word. It's an act of God. It is God who helps us to live lives of holiness and love. And through God's Holy Spirit, that precious gift, the word of God can take root in our lives and we can embody the truth of the gospel. The second question that this gospel lesson asks us is whether our tongues have been loosened. Throughout the Gospel of Mark, Jesus repeatedly instructs the crowd around him to not say anything about what's happening, to not see, say anything about what they are seeing happen in the person of Jesus. We see it in today's Gospel passage. Jesus says, don't talk about this healing. And how can someone not talk about this healing? They've seen something so incredible, so great. And that's what it means to have our tongues loosened. It's to see the work of God. It's to see God crash into our lives and to know that the message of that kingdom, 
The message of that God, that God who has come to us in the person of Jesus Christ, that message can't be held back. It seems to overflow from that crowd. And for us, it seems to overflow out of our lives. The good news must be proclaimed. It must be proclaimed by the people who have been transformed by it because we have been made new. Our ears have been made new and our mouths have been made new to proclaim the good news to the world around us. Our tongues have been loosened and good news must be shared. And so today we are asked if we will tell that good news to the world. The Gospel of Mark ends in a very unique way. We hear throughout the Gospel of Mark that people aren't, they're told to not go and preach about the Gospel. They're not told to go and proclaim that Jesus is the Messiah. And in those final moments of the Gospel of Mark, women come to the tomb and they see that Jesus is not there. And the question that Mark leaves us is a question of, will you go out and speak? Will you go out and share this news? Yes, you're scared. Yes, you're frightened. But God has come to us and told us not to be afraid because he has come to save us. Our ears have been opened. Our tongues have been set free. What can we do but proclaim the good news? Through words, through our lives, through our actions, what can we do but speak this news to the world around us? God has given us lives to proclaim the gospel. Go out and proclaim that gospel today. Amen.